So we go to the next uh, presentation. Our presenter is uh, Dan uh, Van der Broeke, uh, the researcher manager at uh, the Catholic University uh, Leuven in uh, Belgium. He has a, a very uh, long uh, term involvement uh, in uh, the area in the Spire uh, uh, drafting uh, team, uh, as well as uh, in uh, the Open uh, Geospatial Consortium. Uh, please, uh, Danny, present. Do you want to share your own screen, or do you want us to protect uh, your slides? I will uh, share my screen. Do you hear me? Yes, yes. perfectly. Okay, then I will try to share my screen. I uh, hope you can see it. Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, thanks for having this opportunity to introduce, in fact, uh, work that has been done around GeoDecat AP as part of uh, general work of the Open Geospatial Consortium. Um, the Open Geospatial Consortium, I will not introduce it as such, but it's, a, let's say, a, a big consortium of more than 540 uh, members from academia, public sector, and especially also private sector, working together on geospatial standardizations. Okay. Okay, um, as it has been told also by Andrea in the previous uh, presentation, uh, there are many different worlds of which the geo world, the geospatial world is only one, that use uh, different standards for metadata uh, descriptions. Uh, of course, the geospatial world has a long lasting experience in ISO with specific standards for uh, describing metadata records, um, but also in the context of uh, Inspire, as it has been told, uh, there are specific profiles. Even in many countries, there are specific profiles of those uh, standards. So a lot of work has been done in the past. Oops, going back. Uh, Okay. Um, also in the e-governmental world and the ICT world in general, uh, as it has been told, uh, there have been developments in W3C. There are the specific standards DCAT that exist already for some time, but you have also standards like Dublin Core. Uh, the developers' work world is also a world on its own with their own approaches and standards. The archive world, uh, the same. So the idea was try to analyze the different uh, um, different standards related to metadata and to bring to try to bring together these different worlds so in the eyes of the geospatial world this was a kind of logic uh, marriage uh, well maybe it's a menage a trois but uh, with different organizations both like the OGC W3C ISO ISA um, and so the idea came up to work on a discussion paper uh, of the OGC because we saw that a lot of things were happening uh, worldwide. Uh, so not only in Europe, a lot in Europe, but also in Australia, New Zealand, Canada, and so forth. So uh, therefore, it was decided a few years ago to start with a... Um, okay. Seems not to be moving. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we decided to develop a OGC discussion paper which was uh, finally published and is available on the website of the OGC uh, at the beginning of this year. Uh, so the content of this discussion paper uh, was to provide an overview of relevant metadata standards and from the different worlds. Um, and the focus was mostly on chapter three with 
implementation examples that were collected at that time. In total, there are seven. Uh, then the fourth chapter is more uh, providing some information and discussing issues on the alignment between GeoDIC at AP development and what is happening in Inspire and how future integration could happen and what are the issues. The more detailed descriptions of uh, what is described in Chapter 3 is in the annexes, and you see there the list of the seven cases that were developed. Uh, some of uh, the cases are more uh, related to uh, European projects. Uh, for example, Open Transport Net was uh, one of the first initiators to describe in full detail and have specific activities. Uh, to describe the implementation of GeoDCAT AP, but also there were some national ones that were uh, described from the Czech Republic, uh, the Netherlands, and also Belgium at that time. Um, so I will not describe now all the standards relevant, but of course what is uh, developed in the uh, um, discussion paper is the ISO 19100 series of standards in which metadata have a, a dominant and predominant role, uh, the full DCAT family, uh, but also other standards and initiatives like Dublin Core or Link Data in general, then Dublin Core and then schema.org are, are described. So I will not go into detail for that one because the focus of the document is mostly on discussing some of the cases. Uh, so, uh, several GeoDCAT AP implementations were described. So, we looked into several implementations, not only real production uh, case, but also pre-production, uh, test cases, proof of concept uh, implementation. So, most of the, the seven cases were maybe not a real operational or not always an operational setup. What was excluded were theoretical cases or theoretical papers uh, on the issue. Uh, the general focus of uh, describing and discussing the cases was related to integrated metadata management, where focus uh, is on bringing the two worlds, the geospatial world and the eGov or ICT world together, um, and integrated publications, so management and publication, so publication of open data and geo metadata through one interface, um, a data portal, or uh, other ways of publishing web. Uh, we decided to focus on or to have four focus areas. Uh, one area could be on how metadata input manually or automatically harvesting uh, is done, was done. And the metadata application into an integrated open data port was another focus area. The third focus area is publication of metadata as linked data. And then uh, a lot of the examples were also on uh, mapping metadata between different standards. Um, so we decided to describe the seven cases according to a best practice template, which is shown in this slide, the first part of it. Uh, so basically, we collected information through the title of the, of the case with some details, uh, abstracts, in fact, on where it occurred, the organizations involved, the status, whether it's production or test environment, contact persons, URLs, if relevant, etc. Then the focus area, which refer to one of the four focus areas that I described before, and then a more narrative introduction about the initiative or projects. Uh, this was then complemented with some other um, uh, information. Uh, what were the goals of the specific setup or the project? What was the approach um, in the pilot or what was the reason behind the project? And then a short description of the results. Uh, so what were the results, the important pros, cons, eventual issues uh, encountered, etc. And then, of course, conclusion with what is the overall conclusion, the ease of implementation, uh, ease of use, repeatability, etc. And then eventually there were technical annexes uh, with documents and supporting materials. 
uh, I will not describe all the seven cases in, in at large, but just I mentioned the seven uh, cases that are in the document. The first one is, in fact, uh, OBEOS, which is an ontology-based earth observation search system. It's a project that was developed and steered by ESA, with partners involved, of course. Uh, and that aimed to extend an operational gateway with flink data interfaces uh, based on W3C LDP, but also on the GeoDCAT AP interface. And the aim was to facilitate the discovery of Earth observation uh, metadata. Uh, another, in fact, a series of uh, activities related to each other was in the OGC itself, where you have annually a testbed. In testbed 12, uh, there were several topics of work on metadata, um, which were uh, developed as separate work packages in the testbed, and where there were three main goals to test. Uh, it's the semantic enablement of OGC catalog services, then the interoperability between the different standards and open search standards. And in fact, one of the other goals was also to increase awareness of registry capabilities for control management. So that was the OGC one. I should mention there that in the meantime, there were new test beds in OGC where also work on metadata was done, uh, partially on with GeoDCAT AP, but mostly also with other uh, standards. As I mentioned before, uh, the European OTN uh, uh, project also uh, seeked a GeoDCAT AP implementation, where the idea was to integrate the metadata uh, mostly related to transport-related geospatial data sets, uh, with also metadata from uh, open transport uh, data, so not necessarily geospatial. Uh, and in that context, OTN uh, developed a hub uh, that is, in fact, meant for cities to manage and display their open and geospatial, geospatial uh, transport-related data sets, all in one catalog. So that was the aim of that project. Um, a fourth case that is described is data bio, uh, where the focus was, again, a little bit different. Um, the idea was there to uh, provide in a more user-friendly way metadata in one application, uh, uh, by Google Earth KML format. Uh, there were specific uh, goals related to GeoDCAT uh, to try to define transformations from GeoDCAT to KML, um, then to have these different uh, visualizations uh, and approaches, but also to prepare a converter for GeoDCAT uh, AP to KML so that it can uh, be publicly accessible and is available for reuse. Um, and there were, of course, some more general uh, goals of the project. The fifth case that is described is how in Czech Republic uh, the National Inspired Geo Portal uh, supports now also the GeoDCAT AP. Uh, so, uh, of course, the ISO standard is also supported in the ISO. Inspire uh, specification is supported, but uh, also in the Czech case, GeoDCAT AP has been implemented. And as it was already referred to by Andrea, uh, the Netherlands, the sixth case, is more on uh, a lot of work that has been done by Geonovum and other partners in the Netherlands uh, to uh, find new approaches to publish geospatial and other data on the web. Uh, and to make, uh, in that way, uh, geospatial data also more discoverable. That context, GeoDCAT AP, was tested as one of the approaches to translate, transform, inspire and ISO 19139 metadata records to uh, RDF format. And then the last case, but I won't say too much because uh, the Flemish case is uh, a separate uh, presentation. But already at that time, also, there was work done in Flanders by the Information Flanders uh, Agency, uh, a private sector partner, uh, to do a proof, a metadata portal proof of concept. It was a kind of study where different approaches to have a more integrated approach for metadata uh, publication was, in fact, analyzed, studied, and also tested. And also in that context, 
uh, GeoDecat AP, uh, but also um, DCAT AP uh, was uh, uh, largely tested. Uh, so the seven cases, as I said, are described in the uh, discussion paper. So it's a public paper, so you can find it. Uh, and the details, as I said, are, uh, the, uh, are described in the annexes of the report. Uh, now, uh, two slides to go. Uh, so uh, the next steps, what is what are we currently doing in the context of the metadata and catalog domain working group of OGC is to extend the existing discussion paper to a best practice document. That's a little bit different from uh, the discussion paper in the sense uh, that we need to describe in more detail some of the examples in the form of best practices, uh, where of course we will have again kind of abstract, but where also how the implementation was done is described. So it will describe briefly the workflow that was followed, uh, the technical environment, not necessarily the software and so, but more uh, how the technical environment was uh, hosted and set up. It will describe uh, more technical details about the results obtained, but also issues encountered, mostly by examples, so to provide examples of problems or issues and how eventually they were solved. And uh, will be added also are a series of recommendations from the implementations and then of course conclusions. So currently this um, extension towards a best practice document is ongoing and we hope that by the OGC meeting in Canada in September uh, several examples are described and we have a draft final draft document ready. Then a last slide is uh, more the discussion that started already in the OGC. Uh, originally it was put on the table. Uh, should we embrace GeoDCAT AP as a community standard? Uh, so, as you know, or maybe not know, but in the OGC, OGC develops own standards like WMS to deliver maps on the web. Uh, and that's a long series of standards, but also uh, they embrace community standards. For example, if it's a standard that is applied by many, many, uh, or supported by many, many implementations. A typical example is the KML standard from Google that started as a de facto standard as Google uh, solution, but that was then going through a process in the OGC and the KML is now already for some time a community standard. That's an example. So the idea was why not go from a de facto ISA standard um, to OGC community standard as it is. So the idea was uh, welcomed, uh, but uh, in comments from different big organizations, member of OGC said that we need more, more and broader applications and, and examples of implementation. So usually the step towards community standards is only uh, taken when there is really many, many applications worldwide. Um, and one of the things we did already in that context look into potential IPR issues, but the conclusion was that there were, will probably not be a real problem to do that. Uh, and other issues were raised as well. What with the main the whole thing, what with new developments, I refer in this slide still to DCAT 1.1, but there will be, of course, as it has been described by Andrea, new versions that will develop on their own pace of development. So, and there are a lot of things ongoing in parallel. Uh, so we need to resolve maybe issues, but we also need to align with other developments. Uh, what is for sure is that there is certainly interest from uh, member states in the EU, from other countries worldwide, and also from different projects. Uh, there are only a few that were or are mentioned here that could support this uh, work. So this is still an open issue, and I want to end with that. It's maybe also a question towards the community. Is there real interest, and what would be the advantage of uh, going to a, a community standard or not? And with that, I would like to end. We have time for one question. Yeah, there, there is actually a question in the chat box. Is there any way to integrate DCAT-AP and do DCAT-AP, or is it always 
remain two separate data sets. Uh, Danny, do you want to take this question or do you want to pass it on to Andrea and, and ourselves? Yeah, maybe that's more a question for Aiza on its own because I also know that there is static SAP, which is kind of specific implementation for the statistical oh, yeah. communities. So what I understood is that you have TCAT AP as a basis and from there for different communities you have specific implementations or profiles, let's say. Uh, but okay, that's what you can observe, but I don't know if that's a good uh, direction to follow. Uh, certainly when the new version of DCAT in the future that might include uh, geospatial requirements or requirements from the geospatial community, then you might go to one DCAT, DCAT AP uh, version. I don't know. It's more also a question for Ida, I think. Yeah, I think that <clears throat> one thing to be uh, clarified is that DCAT AP is a superset of DCAT AP. So, it's basically just adding new things. Uh, uh, so a judicial AP metadata record is a judicial AP metadata record plus other things. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know if here the, uh, this uh, answers your questions in terms of integration or you were thinking of something different. Uh, I must also say that uh, the, when I was mentioning the transformation uh, rules for converting uh, geospatial metadata into judicial AP, Actually, the transformation rules have a parameter uh, which defines the output, let's say, profile. So uh, there is a core profile and an extended one. So if you say, if you ask to have uh, the core profile as an output, what you get back from an ISO or Inspire record is a DCAT AP record. So a metadata record that, that includes only those metadata elements that are defined into DCAT AP. The extended is providing uh, those uh, elements plus uh, the ones that uh, are specific uh, to GDGP. Uh, so the, the additional ones that GDGP added to DKDP. Does this answer your question, Geert? Um. Okay, thanks. Uh, Francesco is uh, asking, is there any relation in the work going with the stack uh, uh, for uh, AO uh, data sets? Um, personally, I'm not involved in that work, but uh, there is uh, coordination between what is happening in the uh, metadata and the catalog domain working group and the, uh, all the work done around stack uh, in the OGC. Uh, this is not systematically so, but uh, we have regular uh, in the meetings in the OGC. We have regular the topic of stack on the on the agenda over the past few meetings at least. But it's not a, a joint work or something or a more structured uh, cooperation. But there is of course this link. That's what I know about it because I'm not personally involved in that one. Thank you very much, uh, Dan. 